What's up guys? So today we are talking about ocean resumes. So this is something I've been wanting to create a video on for a while now and that's because in the last few years I've created so many different resumes for so many different types of things within the realm of ocean and in the last year I started writing resumes for different people, helping people all over the world with different kinds of resumes for different industries all related to the ocean and I found that there are very different strategies that you use for different kinds of industries. So today I wanted to talk about the three biggest industries that I've seen in the whole ocean related um, industry and that is research, conservation, and the scuba industry. How to create a resume for each of those, the strategies that I've been using, and what I've seen really works. So if you're new here, my name's Eli and I'm a scuba instructor. I'm also marine conservation staff at the Whale Shark Oceanic Research Center. If you're interested in keeping up with my very crazy life here on Utila, then definitely check out my Instagram. I will link that below. But otherwise, we'll go ahead and start with the first industry today, and that is research. So the first type of industry I wanted to focus on in creating a resume for is the research industry. And so for this type of resume, you probably want to keep it as simple and blunt and to the point as possible because I found that professors do not have the time of day to sit down and read and try to decipher through an extravagant, extremely creative resume. They just want to see the facts. Some things that you definitely want to prioritize in a research type resume are, of course, your education, and then your education and research positions. This should probably be on your first page to really emphasize your educational experience. You should also definitely include any publications if you have any. This is a huge deal in research. Definitely include publications. If you are even like second, third, fourth author, just include it. This is still valuable to include. And also definitely include grants that you have received or even just scholarships that you've received. If you received a $100 scholarship for writing an essay in the last year of high school or something like that, still include it because people want to know in research that you can get money because this is so important in research to make sure that you are able to write grants successfully. Include all of the grants and awards that you can possibly remember. If you don't have any grants or awards, that's also okay, but try to think of something that you've just even been recognized for. A lot of things that you might not realize that you can put on a resume can be put on a resume. Like maybe you were nominated as MVP in your high school swim team or something like that. It's still valuable to put those things and acknowledge that you are recognized and capable than having nothing in that section. Another thing that's probably really important to include for a research type resume is certifications. So if you are certified to do any specific kinds of research activities, if you are a science diver, if you are any kind of certification that I can't specifically think of, include those as well because those can be really important and also can sometimes be a make or break if a research um, organization is going to hire you. If they need a science diver and you're not a science diver, then they can't hire you. <laughs> so the next type of resume I wanted to talk about was a conservation industry resume. And this is something I've gained a bit of experience with in the last few months working at a conservation organization. In my experience, a conservation type resume does have a bit more room for creativity. I've found that especially smaller conservation organizations really appreciate that creative component because it is really valuable to have creative skills in the conservation industry. So for this type of resume, and I forgot to mention this in the last section, but in a research resume, you probably won't include a headshot. It just really isn't standard to include one, but in the conservation world, it often is included. So if you have a really nice headshot, this can be a really nice thing to include within your resume. If you don't have a super nice photo of yourself, then I might not include it or just take a professional photo. It's a lot worse to include a unprofessional photo than it is to have nothing. I don't know if I said that right, but it, it can definitely hurt you <laughs> if you don't have a really good looking photo 
So I think that's why it's sometimes left out. But if you've got a stellar, professional, amazing looking photo, then I would throw it up there on the conservation uh, resume. I think personality is something that's really important in this industry. Something that I've also seen as a bit more common in the conservation industry is also including a bio at the top to clarify your intent and maybe a little bit more of your personality to show within a very small fraction of the resume. So some things to prioritize on a conservation resume. Definitely your education is always important on any resume, so this is usually going to be at the very top. Other important things to emphasize on a conservation resume are going to be your educational experience. If you had experience teaching, if you had experience in an educational setting, this is definitely important to include, along with volunteer positions. I think this is something that is so important to highlight in conservation because it shows that you are willing to it shows that you have a good heart, I think, and it shows that you are willing to do those things even if you're not paid. I think volunteer experience is extremely appreciated in the conservation industry and thus should be highlighted if you haven't. Another thing to highlight in this type of resume is probably grants and awards. Definitely include those if you've written any grants, if you've written any successful scholarships, definitely include those because in a lot of conservation organizations, it's also very important to have experience with grant writing and to be successful at grant writing. I think on a conservation resume, it's also really valuable to have your unique experience on there. If you're applying to a marine type position at an aquarium or something like that, and you worked for five years at a social media marketing firm or something like that, I think that's still so valuable to include. At a lot of conservation organizations, they tend to be really multifaceted and need people with a very diverse skill set. So I don't think you should be so afraid to really showcase those unique skills that you have. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the last type of resume and that is for the scuba industry. So this is another type of industry I've gained a lot of experience with in the last few months and I have also written specifically a scuba type resume for the position that I currently have and have now learned a lot about what should be put on a scuba resume. So if you're applying to a scuba type job, I've learned that headshots are pretty standard and I'm not sure why that is, but I've learned this from my course director that having a resume or having a headshot is important and maybe that's because a lot of resumes are sent all over the world and you don't have that face-to-face -face interaction and so having a face on a resume can be really humbling. In the scuba industry it's so much face-to-face uh, -face interaction between staff, between other people, so I think just Showing that you have a really, I don't know, professional demeanor and are a put together person is an important thing to showcase. And so having a really, really nice headshot is a very important thing to have on this type of resume. I've also found that having a bio is another really important thing to include on a scuba type resume just because it really gets to the point of what you are looking for and where your experience is. So some things I've learned to prioritize on a scuba type resume are definitely your certifications. So this is going to be like as high on your scuba resume as you can or just very big and emphasized are all your certifications, all your specialties, all your scuba experience and teaching experience is definitely the most important thing of a scuba resume because this is what you're applying for, this is the whole thing. So definitely make that section look very nice and very robust. Another thing that is important to include is your education. This can be really valuable if you have some type of education that might really benefit your um, scuba type position, especially if you studied something like biology or sciences, or even something like communications, which can provide a lot of different benefits to the dive shop as well. Another extremely important thing to include on a scuba resume is definitely teaching and education experience. If you've had any sort of experience teaching anything, this is a huge part of the role, so it's definitely important to include as well. 
Another thing I've learned is extremely important is languages. This is what I've learned to be like a make or break thing for many different dive shops because so many travelers come in from all over the world for many different dive shops. So if you can speak multiple languages and can teach courses in multiple different languages, communicate with lots of different people, you're going to be able to teach so much more than the next person. So definitely emphasize if you have any sort of experience with other languages, what that level of experience is like. So those were my resumes for today. I hope if you are applying for an ocean type job right now that this was valuable for you. I just tried to talk about the types of industries that I have the most experience with and these are the strategies that I've learned are really successful. So I hope that they were valuable for you. But otherwise, if you are applying to a different kind of industry within the ocean kind of world, definitely drop a comment below of what you're applying for. And if you have other tips related to what I've talked about today, then definitely talk about those in the comments as well because I think they'd be valuable for everyone. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. Thank y'all.